Here's a rundown of the key points from quiz three. So what did the Neo-Assyrians do wrong? The short answer is oppression. The Neo-Assyrians, which is to say the Assyrian Empire of the Iron Age, to distinguish it from a very different empire during the Bronze Age, the Neo-Assyrian Empire, the Assyrians of the Iron Age, sought to rule through the crushing of their subjects in an attempt to eliminate all possible resistance. This has the opposite effect. Because ruled by oppression, the Neo-Syrians are a, an object lesson in how ruled by oppression brings about a sense of threat to identity that people respond to, that instills rebellion. There are a number of ways that the Assyrians accomplished this, uh, bringing about their own destruction. First of all, the benefits of empire instead of being shared by all the people participating in it, which is to say a stronger economy collectively, access to more resources, a potential higher standard of living, is reserved entirely for the Assyrians themselves. All of the wealth, all the advantage, all the resources of the empire are brought back to Nineveh and everyone else is locked out. Everyone else is excluded. The Assyrians treat the lands that they conquer as uh, as, as resources to plunder, bringing back uh, booty, bringing back their, uh, their treasured goods, uh, even treating you know, books and knowledge. As, as acquisitions, as things to display. Uh, there is a, a, a very impressive library associated with Ashurbanipal, which is used not as a center of learning, but as a, a symbol of his power and standing at the expense of all others. The local identity is, is threatened and uh, attacked through the... Uh, imposition of uh, Assyrian customs and religion through the suppression of cultural heritage and, and language, through the deportation of entire uh, cities and communities, and um, a, a essentially a scorched earth policy toward any potential resistance. As I mentioned, this has the exact opposite effect. And the Neo-Assyrians are brought down by uprisings constant and, and accumulating throughout their realm until the, the Medes and the Babylonians work together to, uh, to end Assyrian rule totally and completely. Who are the Phoenicians? Okay, so who are the Phoenicians? Well, um, First of all, don't get them confused with the Philistines. The Philistines are the, uh, the refugees from the collapse of the Aegean who settle into uh, Egyptian southern Canaan and uh, help bring about the fall of the Egyptians. The Egyptians call them the Sea Peoples. That's the Philistines. Um, the Phoenicians are the people that live in Iron Age Lebanon. And they have a city-state culture that is built around entrepreneurial trade. And there's a, there's a very key distinction between sort of centralized trade of the Minoans and the Mycenaeans, which is, which is, um, which is constructed from the top down. And, you know, the, the Wanox at the top tells everybody what to do. And uh, it tends to be very conservative, not risk-taking, because uh, the, the Wanox wants to ensure uh, maximum profitability for the, for the whole city and did not put anything at risk. Uh, and so they keep pursuing things that work to the point that things become unbalanced is one of the reasons why the Bronze Age economy collapses because it becomes unbalanced because you know the, the people in charge of it keep pursuing the things that work as it becomes more and more untenable as it becomes more and more difficult to, uh, to accelerate the production uh, of bronze and so forth and so on. Phoenicians uh, practice entrepreneurial trade in which individual shipmasters 
uh, go out and take the risk for themselves. And uh, uh, when they succeed, they bring about riches for themselves, which flow back into the Phoenician economy through uh, um, through uh, commerce and uh, tariffs and so forth, uh, and raise the standard of living that way. Uh, and when they are unsuccessful in the risks that they take in finding new markets, in trying out new goods and so forth, uh, that means that the risk falls upon themselves and is contained on that ship and shipmaster. And so you have all of these ships and shipmasters going out into the Mediterranean Sea and the Aegean and the Black Sea and, and creating this, uh, um, this, this uh, absolutely impressive network of, uh, of trade that is built around the advantage that the Phoenicians have. First of all, entrepreneurial trade is itself an advantage. Second, the Phoenicians have uh, access to unique natural resources that they are able to parlay into finished goods that generate great profit. The most important of these is uh, Tyrian uh, purple, uh, the, the murex dye that, uh, that they are able to draw from the, the murex shell and which is, uh, becomes, uh, because of the way that the Phoenicians sell it, a symbol of nobility and royalty all throughout the ancient world and for hundreds of years to come. Uh, also, they have access to cedar, which we know from the Epic of Gilgamesh is the most prized of all wood because it is both beautiful and strong. Uh, and they also have access to unique uh, veins of marble and, and a number of other uh, natural resources. Uh, but they don't just uh, sell these resources, they turn them into Phoenician goods, uh, textiles and, uh, and so forth. And uh, this means that they're able to uh, increase uh, the, the value of the, the raw material that they are uh, blessed with. Uh, so these two things help to bring about a, uh, a, a trade system that connects the Mediterranean in a way that has not been done before and uh, brings about a greater sense of there being civilizations around the uh, Mediterranean and the Aegean and the Black Sea. Uh, this also results in colonies being planted that have a long-term impact on the Mediterranean most uh, most importantly, Carthage, that becomes the uh, the 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 trade empire nemesis of the Romans later on in the Iron Age. And as if that weren't enough, the Phoenicians develop a phonetic alphabet that uh, it, they communicate to all the people that they encounter, spreading lit literacy throughout the Mediterranean world. And as I mentioned, a phonetic alphabet is much easier to access than the kinds of writing systems that had been in use before. And so this is part of the shift of empowerment from the few to the many that is characteristic of the Iron Age. Factors that made the Persian Empire stable and successful, they didn't rule the way the Neo-Assyrians did. In other words, the Persians set out to create an empire that people wouldn't resist belonging to. There are a number of aspects of this. The Persians lowered the chance of a rebellion by ruling with as little oppression as possible uh, and tolerating local religion and culture rather than forcefully imposing theirs. The Persian king was explicitly not a god, but through ritual trappings and seclusion was converted into an abstract symbol that served as a focus of identity connecting the, all these different lands that had nothing in common. The Persians did not keep standing armies, which tend to abuse their authority, and uh, did not often go to war, because the Persian Empire had been expanded to geographically secure frontiers. The system of satrapies was set up in such a way as to ensure that people could reasonably expect just and fair rule. In addition to the satraps, the king employed a network of spies whose job it was to ensure that the satraps were neither oppressive nor corrupt. Finally, the positive encouragement of local economies and vibrant trade within the Persian Empire brought about general prosperity, a higher standard of living, and improvements in the birth and death rates so that 
within the Persian Empire, people could sense that they were better off because of the uh, the improved uh, economic uh, situation and because of the greater sense of security that comes from the protection of the Persian Empire offered without the intrusion of military oppression. Multiple choice question. Aramaic became the common tongue of the Fertile Crescent because uh, all these are joke answers except for the story of the Aramaeans is that they spread throughout the Fertile Crescent and beyond so that you can always count on there being a community of Aramaeans wherever you travel. And so it became beneficial for traders and other people that were in motion throughout this part of the world to have uh, Aramaic as a language, either themselves or bringing Aramaeans with them, so that they could know that they would have somebody to communicate with. And over time, this meant that Aramaic became a common tongue throughout Mesopotamia, Canaan, and the lands beyond. And this became official under the Persian Empire. What's different about iron compared to bronze? All right, so it's not, it's not that iron is inherently stronger or better. Um, you know, weapons made with iron are comparable to weapons made with bronze. The difference is that bronze is more difficult to produce in quantity because bronze requires control over copper and tin. And it's a technology that is relatively difficult to master. And so as a result, the, the production of bronze tools and bronze weapons in the Bronze Age is limited and expensive. Bronze is a luxury good, and this results in those tools and weapons going only to the rich. Iron ore is very common. And as a result of that, uh, once the, uh, the, the sort of threshold for figuring out how to smelt iron is passed, iron tools and weapons can be produced in quantity. This results in uh, improved agricultural production, raising the standard of living, uh, higher birth rate, low, lower death rates, uh, um, a, you know, a flourishing agricultural economy, and a stronger people in terms of health and welfare and vibrancy, uh, also stronger in terms of military aspect because it's, it's possible to produce uh, weapons, swords and spears in, in great quantity. Um, and this uh, introduces the age of the large Iron Age armies and the, uh, the greater ease of conquest and uh, the, the efforts made at producing empire through uh, uh, occupation and dominion with, uh, with, with varied success, uh, as we'll see when we go forward. And that's the end of the quiz. Please email me with any questions.